Hey, I'm back. It's Mike. Okay, modeling for construction. We're going to continue on. Um, just so you're aware, if you're following along at uh, your workplace or whatever geographic region you're in, I have two projects open. I have the finished, parts start finished, and parts uh, start on the part finished on the uh, left. And I have parts start on the right. And I have, within those two projects, I have the original parts model. I have the original, and I have the parts model. The original model, and the parts model. Working from the start file. Also, the same thing going in the finished version. I have the original model, 3D view and the parts model 3D view. Okay, now, this can be perplexing uh, to any young, bu young budding architectural engineering student. This can be perplexing, and I wouldn't want you to have to go through what I went through to get to this level of expertise. Whatever, whatever the level of expertise you perceive me to be on, I wouldn't want you to have to go through it to get to this level. Okay? Or just to get to this level, whatever level I'm on, I wouldn't want you to have to go through the trials and tribulations that I had to go through to get to this level. But again, I started as a paper boy. Anyway, we could talk for days on that alone. And uh, when I spoke with Edge Architecture up in, uh, um, down in Tampa, Tampa Bay, uh, they didn't want to hear it. <laughs> they just wanted to hear this difference between then and now. So they were really good. Uh, edge Architecture, I recommend them. They're out of Tampa Bay. All right, so, yeah. In any event, we're, we're talking modeling for construction, right? And, and in essence, we're talking modeling for engineering, too, and modeling for architecture. How you model yourself and how you model models, right? Autodesk Inventor, you could be along the same track and you could be creating parts for Tesla or for SpaceX, right? So engineering runs the gamut of all sorts of disciplines. You can be working for NASA. Uh, I was offered a job there, believe it or not. I don't know if he was being facetious or not, but I was offered a job. F working on the move team over at Delta. Anyway, back then it was a different story. I had some issues. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, you get to go talk to the issuer. All right, now, yeah, creating parts from the conceptualized model, or even from the uh, detailed models, uh, can be pretty tricky, right? And knowing when and why and how and uh, in what context to do so can make a difference as to whether or not you're wasting your time. And uh, getting to that point, if you do arrive at the conclusion that you will indeed, indeed need to create parts then you should need to know the following exercise. This is important, and this isn't easy. This isn't easy. It may come easy to some folks, but it didn't come easy to me. So I had to uh, persevere, persistence the tools. So we went over a little bit about creating parts from this, uh, this model that wasn't a part when we started, right? It wasn't considered a part, it was considered Elements, wall, floor, ceiling, elements. Stack wall, actually, uh, not really, it's not a stack wall. We don't, I can't tell if it's a stack wall because the bottom cinder blocks aren't extruding from the wall surface. Could very well just be uh, a wall. You know the difference between the two, stack wall and a regular wall? Big difference, right? Couldn't change the width of the different layer, the exterior layers. If you had brick on top of a block, big difference. And uh, you don't want to be orthographically projecting it like Dallas Design Group on 8th Street is doing. You know, when you just be frustrated. But again, Revit AutoCAD RA. Well, what does that mean? Resident Alien, right? Resident Alien. It's, it's synonymous with uh, the EB-5 program. Resident Alien. There are some engineering folks that come over here or there, stay there, and engineer things here and design things here. So you have to know your resident aliens. You have to know world cultures. And uh, 
uh, they were rude. <laughs> Those, that particular culture was rude. Anyway, you can go, go I'm, I could yell at them all I want, but I don't, I'm not that kind of guy. All right, so we talked about that. We talked about that again. Um, and we talked about um, dividing parts with gaps. We talked a little bit about uh, creating the custom gap. But I stopped you there on the last episode. And I says, why don't you show me in the field instead of me showing you? And then it goes against my, 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 uh, my mantra. I'm here to help, right? I'm here to help. So I'm gonna try to get through this without stumbling through it. I may stumble a little bit, but again, I'm not, you know, I have a production studio here with a staff that I can do take, get to take, get to take. Uh, when was I? I got, to, I got things to do, you know, and I have other endeavors I'm looking to, uh, other, I, I keep raising the bar for myself, right? So uh, that's why I, I want to explain this and then move on. Because until you can get out there in the field and practice under the gun, and you have to produce, then it's all it is, all it is, or all, all this is just speak. It has, to, it has to come to fruition, right? It has to come to fruition. You know, granted, I'm sure, I mean, I know, as a matter of fact, that all the conduits I've run over the course of my life has stubbed up, right? <laughs> all the fiber that I've run, I've laid out, I should say has come to fruition, I mean, the fiber's in, right? I'm pretty sure the fiber has made it to the top of Rockefeller Center. I'm sure uh, the coax that I ran, 450 North End Avenue, made it up to 450 North End Avenue. Anyway, if you're looking for me, I actually live at uh, 41 River Terrace in Battery Park City in Manhattan, if you're interested in meeting me. I'm always down in Battery Park City. Again, I have some satellite offices here and there. But I live in Battery Park. If you're interested in giving me a ring, just go talk to the concierge. They'll be glad to <coughs> ring you up, <coughs> and I'll be glad to help you in a one-on-one -on -one exercise. So now, um, what I'd like to do is just go back through the custom the customization of the custom profile and apply those divided uh, wall profiles, for lack of a better term, uh, with a uh, a custom profile to show you that yes we did the uh, step notch but what we couldn't do is we couldn't do or I couldn't do two different patterns uh, maybe a, a notch and then a step notch right or uh, a combination of the two so what I'm going to do is I'm going to not do it in the uh, the finish model I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it <clears throat> in the start model and this would be a good chance for you to ascertain you know, the new analyst. Uh, this will be a good um, opportunity for you to analyze how much I'm able to comprehend. You may assume that I'm doing this for the first time. That's such a case. It, it's more to do with the uh, theory of Euclidean uh, Cartesian coordinates and Euclidean space and all those beautiful things. When you can understand and grasp that concept, then you'll see that uh, it's not the case. I, I've been doing this for a long time. And I want to try to share some of this to practice and to, uh, to, uh, to help you get through it if you're, if you're struggling. And, and I guess there's a certain sense of proving that I'm not, I'm not that nuts. I mean, I'm nuts. Don't get me wrong. I'm nuts. But I'm not that nuts. Trust me. Trust me. I'm not. I'm not going to, use, I'm not going to uh, manipulate a person to get what I want. I'm not. That's the difference. I'm not going to be a person to, to, to extract any type of monetary value. And that's one thing I won't do. I won't use somebody for money. I won't. I won't sit at a desk collecting a check looking at the clock. I won't. That's not my forte. I wouldn't want it done to me and I wouldn't do it to somebody else. But again, I've never paid, I, I've never had anyone pay for a date. I, I've had lots of dates. So I can't remember anyone ever forking the bill. <laughs> so, I'm nuts, but I'm not that nuts. I'm old fashioned. That's just how it is. If you don't like it, fuck off. Change the channel. All right, so, we're going to do this. Now, now keep in mind, this is not a part yet, right? In the parts model, even though it's a parts model in the 3D view, it's not a, a part yet. It's still the original model, right? So, if I select the wall and create a part out of it, and then divide part 
coordinates based on intersecting planes, intersecting references, and I select all. Well, I can select all, and I can go to level two, reference plane Y plane one, and grid one, and I could hit OK, right? I could change the division profile to notch. I can give it a one inch gap, and I could hit OK. A serious error has occurred. It is strongly recommended that you save as, to save your work in a new file before continuing. Absolutely not. And hit OK. Serious error. Now if we zoom in, you can see that I didn't get my one inch gap. Serious error. Serious. So let me turn on this section box. And grab that. And right here. And you see, ah, no good. Let's grab it. Let's do it over. I didn't get my one inch gap because of the serious error. Serious error. Wait, we need to get it. A serious error. Serious satellite radio. Maybe, maybe that happened. All right, so there's the one inch gap. Let's do it. Now, what, what, what was uh, eluding me in the last uh, part of this exercise was that I wanted to do exactly what the book said. The book said that you can have two different profiles sculpting this partitioned wall. You could have a notch and you could have a stepped uh, notch profile. And what, what, what I did see was that you, uh, have, to, uh, you have to exclude them uh, Include them separately, that's what I should say. So what the book said was then just go back into the profile, uh, divide the parts, intersecting references, make the levels, all, cancel, oops, deselect, deselect them, right? You were supposed to deselect, I'm supposed to deselect them. So if I go back here, I go to edit division, I'm sorry, edit division, intersecting planes, turn them all on again, you remember, I had level two, reference plane, Y plane one, Euclidean space, uh, grid one. I'm gonna turn off reference plane, Y plane one, okay, apply, and hit okay. Now it's gone, right? This one is gone. So now I'm gonna go back to this panel and I'm going to divide parts and I'm going to intersecting planes, and I'm going to select all, just the reference planes this time, because I only want to select that one. And I want to hit OK. Now I want to change the gap to one inch. Uh-oh, a serious error may be occurring again. One inch. And I'm going to give this a different profile of an angled step. I call it an angled notch. Ooh, sorry. Sometimes, you know, you do it enough, it's second fiddle. And I'm going to uh, notice that it applies to this panel right now, right? Hit OK. It just applied to that panel, but if I select this section box and I grab its uh, grip, handle grip, control grip. Now this is a step notch in this, in the vertical, yet this remains as a notch in the horizontal along the level to grid line and along the um, grid one line it also remains as much but along the reference plane y plane one it's stepped okay so that's that that was a little difficult to get through at first and it gets a little more perplexing but again over and over and over, and over again you do it you'll find that you'll become pretty pretty good at it now, whether or not I'm good at instructing it is something else. Whether I'm good at annoying you is another aspect of it. Again, I can persist that I know, and that may annoy the shit out of you. You know, the ones that just don't like me. And I'll, unfortunately, not to be disingenuous or facetious or, or malicious, but I'm going to keep getting better and better at it. And, and you know what? My health might even get better. That may annoy folks. I, I apologize if my health, uh, if my health improves, and if that, if that bothers you, then I'm sorry. I'm even, I'll even apologize for that. If, if me getting healthy irritates you, I apologize. I hope you feel better. I'm sorry you feel that way.
again, I, I don't hold malice. You know, I'm here to help not only myself, but anyone else who's suffering from the same afflictions. You know, asshole syndrome. All right, so um, now that allows us to use different profiles on different panels. Now, here's the thing I wanted to show you, though. Um, the intersection of this, um, where these notches meet up, right? We have a stepped, we have the step, and then we have this notched out. So if we take a look at this, it should be okay, right? If we look at this in um, maybe a different, let me see if I can get this in a different resolution. Hidden line. I get this in a wireframe. Now it's a little tricky to look at. Yeah, it's not a good representation of it. But I'm just looking at this in um kind of what's a good way of looking at this? If I drew a section, if I drew a section, let me see here. Well, that's the realistic view. If I was to draw a section, didn't write down the center here, just making sure that it there's no um, issue with the intersection of where the two different pros profiles meet. And they shouldn't be, right? Because they're perpendicular to each other. They're perpendicular, they're perpendicular to each other, right? Again, this will give it, give it a just different aesthetic look. Um, anyway, so that's that. Let me double check. This one here is set to uh, consistent colors, I believe. No, it's set to shaded. It's set to shaded. This one is set to shaded. Almost like there's two different wall types here. Shaded here. Mm. All right, something's wrong. Hold on. Something's wrong with these two just different displays. There it is, consistent color. Sorry. All right, so yeah. So far, so good. All right, so that's generally the gist of it. I know it's a little confusing, but it's not too confusing because the next part's even more confusing. And I told you from the onset, from the gecko. Visible graphic display overrides are very, very perplexing to a certain extent. But if, if you're tasked with having to deliver and produce, you'll find a way if you want to. If you want to exist and you want to achieve this level, then you'll find a way to achieve it. Or you won't. You give up. Right? Where's my book? Quitters quit. You get an F so many more times. After a while, you quit. You quit trying, and, and, and that's that goes for the three-year-old, the eighty-year-old. At the end of the day, it's gonna go for me. Someday, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna succumb to life, and that's a part of life. This is an organic process. I'm gonna give up someday, not today. As long as I got a, you know, as long as I got my willpower, I'm gonna persevere. See how long I live. We'll take bets. What is what is the what do the statistics, the statistics say? Well, stress is the biggest one, right? Stress is the biggest killer. Just give me a second. I want to get something set up for you. Just give me a second so I can get it ready. Okay. Now. Okay. Now, excluding all of the. The, the profiles and the um, the embellishing aspects or uh, these uh, these profiles that we can etch into uh, these uh, and divide them up with gaps. We could also exclude exclude and merge and, and all sorts of things with this. Now check this out. Parts uh, merging parts parts can be merged to form larger, more contiguous. Geometry. However, the parts to be merged must have the same material and the same creation and demolition phases, which in this case, I believe, let's go to the finished um, exercise. We look at this one, phase created, um, new construction, phase demolished, none, and the same thing for here, right? And that will apply to this model as well, because we didn't really change any of the phasing on any of these walls, I don't believe. But some of these sample models, you got to be careful. They're deliberately... They're deliberately, I think, in some cases, uh, designed to make you have to figure something out. It may refer to something in the passage, and you have to figure it out. You can't just read it verbatim and not demonstrate it. That's what is a little tricky with this uh, instruction. 
when you try to doing it's one thing. When you try to teach it, it's a whole other thing. I mean, if you can't convey it effectively, then it's not working, right? Like anything, like a math teacher, like a bad teacher with Cameron Diaz, right? To a certain extent, you got to be able to convey what it is you want to convey. I can't just show you a video every day and go to sleep at my desk because I'm miserable because I'm only making $21,000 a year. <clears throat> and $21,000 a year will make you fucking miserable. Anyway, 85 programs or something else. 35 hours, minimum wage, and you get, you get, your, uh, you get your visa. All right, so uh, yeah, parts can be merged. Parts can be merged to form larger, more contiguous geometry. However, the parts merged must have the same material and same creation, demolition phases. And the merged geometry must consist of a single component, a, a single connected component. Component. Parts mass assigned to divisions will not be merged. Okay. So, parts assigned to divisions will not be merged. Well, if I was to take this and this part and merge it, some parts not included in merge. Parts can only be merged if they all have the same material, the same creation, and demolition phases. And the merge geometry consists of a single connected component. Well, there's a gap, right? There's a gap here. There's a gap. But now, let's, uh, let's take a look at that. If I was to then maybe take this, and let's go to one of these panels, right? Edit division, right? Let's take the gap out of there for a second. Now it's still, it's still a, a, a separate partition, right? Let's grab it and hold down control and do this now. See if we can get it. And now it's merged, right? Now you could also grab a part and you could exclude it, right? But it's still there. You can still there. Ah, I shouldn't jump ahead. The merge, um, I'll read it again. Parts with gaps assigned to the division will not be merged. To merge parts, press the control key while selecting multiple parts. In the contextual ribbon, click merge parts. So click two of them, click merge. Once parts have been merged, you can always edit them in the future. To edit merge parts, select a part and then select edit merge from the contextual ribbon. Go back and do it again. <clears throat> so if we were to come back here and go to Edit Merge Parts, Edit Merged, you could add a part to it. This one has a gap, right? So let's see what happens. Ah, we got all of them, right? Because I took out the gap. Except for the excluded one, which I shouldn't have taught you yet because that's going to be the next part. Excluding parts. Parts can also be excluded from a model to support more detailed construction conditions. To exclude a part, select a part and click Exclude Parts from the, from the Exclude panel of the contextual ribbon. Well, I think that might be a typo. I don't really believe there's an Exclude panel. I believe there may be an Exclude tool. I don't believe there's an Exclude panel. Now, if I was to select a part, ah, well, you know what? There sure is. I, am, I stand corrected. Exclude. Exclude parts. And you can still select it, right? And from the exclude panel, smart ass, know it all. From the exclude panel, uh, restore parts. Right? So there's that. Another tool in your repertoire. Another tool. Just another one, right? And again, I'll use the Dow Design Group as an example using AutoCAD LT. If that's your intent and that's how it works for you, fine. Whether or not you're utilizing your, your, your staff efficiently and whether or not you're poised uh, for the next generation of students that are coming up into your firm, well, listen, you're running it into the ground now, not later. Dow Design Group, and if they continue along the path that they're continuing, um, is going to run into some issues down the road when the industry does uh, enforce their uh, their COVID compliance onto them. And they're going to have to uh, adhere to the, the to the guidelines. And maybe not in my lifetime. Who knows? Maybe, but it's going to happen. It's just the way the industry is. It's the way the industry is. I mean, it's a very perfect example. Perfect example. Perfect example. 
moving the moving the brick facade in elevation and then moving the stacked concrete CMU or moving a retaining wall in elevation and then moving it in plan and having to run construction lines and rays and aligning these walls up with construction lines and rays and orthographically pro projecting them, projecting them and then getting them on a piece of paper in a viewport and then lining them up. It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous way of doing it. I don't, I don't care if it comes to fruition and it gets brought into SketchUp and it's then brought into Photoshop and then it's shaded and highlighted and all those things and it sells. I don't care that that's a successful way for them to make money. I don't care. It's antiquated. And it may or may not return dividends down the road to them. And now clients expect to see a model in the validated in the field. And if the contractors ever become savvy enough and informed enough, they may turn the tables. Uh, who knows how much money Dow may have cost or how many uh, contractors Dow put on, in the poorhouse. Maybe somebody has an axe to grind. Maybe uh, somebody wants to be able to uh, uh, ensure that it doesn't happen to them down the road. Because, again, you know, I worked, again, I'm not, I'm not bragging, but I, I've worked with some of the large, large projects, large, large GCs, large developers, and I've had to do it the wrong way for so long. And it, it, it beat me down, man. And now I'm starting to see all the folks that, are, that haven't caught up. And now it's how starting to happen. I start to, I see me again getting fired all the time. But except I'm still the one there. <sighs> man. All right, so now this is where it gets tricky. Be aware of the parts category. Be aware of it. I should say beware. Because parts are considered a separate category of elements, you should pay careful attention to how they might affect your views and view templates. Take a look at the visibility and graphic overrides for any view, and you'll see that parts is listed as an object category. This means that once you create parts for a model element, whether the original object was a floor, ceiling, wall, or roof, the parts are all treated as a singular type of object. For example, if you have surface patterns for floors hidden in a material in a view, and you create parts for a floor, the surface the surface pattern will appear again, unless you have hidden surface patterns for the parts category. Now, this could be perplexing, very perplexing, because right off the bat, you're gonna you're gonna do this. You're gonna be let's go into the. Uh, it doesn't matter which one we really go into. I hope they're the same. So we have the original model, the 3D view, and the parts model, okay? So the original model hasn't been broken up into parts yet, right? Now, in the view, the first thing I want you to look at is if we go to the view, visibility graphics, visibility graphics, and we take a look down here, you see there's parts, right? right? Parts aren't shown. But now that we've created parts, we can show them, and if I hit that and hit apply, in this view you can see the parts now, all right? We couldn't, it was when the view, when the visibility had the parts turned off. So, and, 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 good, and for good reason, it should be two different views. That's why we duplicated the view. But there's more to this than that. So now what it's also saying is, well, if you had the uh, surface pattern visibility shut off, then if you had it shut off in the original model, it would still appear in the view. So you're inherently going to say, okay, well, I'll go to the visibility graphics, and I'll go to, uh, to floors. And you'll see this, common edges, hidden lines, interior edges, and you're like, well, wait, wait a second, surface pattern for the floor, what, 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 what when, how, what, how, what? And you get a little confused, and you start looking for surface pattern for the floor. And then you say, damn it, well, what's going on here? And then the, the, you'll say, well, I thought I can override visibility that way. And I'll say, okay, well, let's go back to here for a second, right? And I'll say, well, until we get to this exercise, I'm not going to show you that yet. And we go back over here again. Oops, sorry, over here. Follow along. So now, in your second thought process, my in the original model, 
is to say, okay, well, let's go into um, let's go into the wall itself, I mean, into the floor itself, in the original model, which has the parts still turned on. Original model, parts model, right? Hold on. We want the visibility graphics to this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Visibility graphics. Looks like parts are still on. They are. Let me turn them off. This is important, very important. Okay, so now, this is the, the original model. Parts aren't on. So now you say, okay, let's go into the wall. Let's go into the floor itself. And let's take a look at its assembly. So they go into the edit, uh, edit type of the floor and go into the edit assembly dialog box. I say to myself, okay, well, raise the finish layer, the top layer, and it's vinyl composition tile, right? And I say to myself, hmm, well then, maybe if I take a look at the material that makes up the vinyl composition tile and see that there's a, a pattern here, um, this vinyl composition tile has a pattern applied to it for the foreground of 12 inch tile. And I turn that to none. I say, okay. I hit apply, okay, okay, apply, okay. Well now, you'll notice, it's still off. It said that it's going to appear again, unless you have hidden surface patterns for the parts category as well, right? It's going to appear again. It's supposed to appear again. So now, I'm going to stop this there, and I'm going to come over to here. And I'm going to come over here, oops, oops, excuse me, back to here. And let's take a look at the visibility graphics override again. Object styles is the last. Visibility graphics overrides. Cut lines is the next. Visibility graphics overrides, override host layers, cut lines. Next. And the display hierarchy. Phasing graphic overrides. Next. View depth beyond line style, right? is next. View filters, next. Override uh, graphics by element is next. Graphic display options, silhouette edges. Override graphics in view by element. Line work, right? Highest priority. So that gives you an idea that there's lots of levels at which you can control the visibility of different things. So you may have to dig down deeper into this, especially when the technical director or the technical architect or the project architect gets the drawing and says, I don't want to see the hidden lines in this view. I don't want to see the surface pattern in this view. Because you're learning as you go to become a technical architect, or you're learning as you go to become a lead architect, or you're learning as you go to become a project architect. They're going to say, okay, well, you did a good job, except that I want you to turn this off, or, or, or I don't want to see these lines. Because you're going to skim over it really quick. I don't want to see these lines in this view. I'm about to take this to present it to a client, and when I present it to the client, I don't want to see these lines. And then you have to go back to your desk and figure that out. And if you can't, you're going to start to sweat. And you're going to start to have to dig down. If you can't get it, then you have to, if you can't meet the deadline, then you may have to go. And then you're going to have to grin and bear it and say, damn it, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't keep up with them. I, I got cut from the team, right? I, I, uh, my, my batting average was 115, 118, 127. And they cut me. And they put me back down to the AAA. And now I'm only making $300,000 a year. Anyway, professionals, give me a break. All right, so, I'm putting my Mike Judge hat on for a second. Let's go back into Revit for a second. If we go to this, this, uh, this floor here, and go to right mouse click, whatever's overriding it, Let's say that I override graphics in view by, by category. Let's take a look here. Well, the foreground, by material, by pattern, the foreground surface pattern, the surface pattern, okay? There is no surface pattern, right? There's no surface pattern. Well, if we came over here, and we can see here there's, there's drafting surface patterns, and there's model surface patterns. Well, we could give it a new, new fill pattern and create a 12-inch tile surface pattern, right? We can give it a 12-inch tile surface pattern because in the model, 
is a, a surface pattern assigned to that material, vinyl composition tile, right? In the vinyl tile, there's a, a surface pattern created for it. But in the parts, there's not, right? It's a part now. It's no longer the model. And let me read it again. Unless you have hidden surface patterns for the parts category as well. Well, we haven't. They're not hidden. They're not hidden. They're off. Hidden and off is something else. There is no pattern. There's no pattern. There's a pattern in the model, but there's no pattern. It was displaying what the, what the model pattern had, right? So, it could be a bit perplexing, but if I was to put on, I don't have 12 inch a cross hatch, 12 inch uh, surface pattern to select from, drafting view, right? I don't. But I have other patterns, right? That I could use or create a 12 inch vinyl composition tile pattern. So, in, the, in, in lieu of that, I'll turn this one, I'll, I'll select this one, okay? And I'll hit apply. I'm going, do something, I'm going to do something else afterwards. Well, now there's a surface pattern all over this, right? Hit cancel. Oops. Cancel that. I'm going to do this again. And I'm going to override graphics in channel by category again. And we're going to open the visibility graphics dialog box. And I'm going to come down to, uh, to parts. Oops. I'm, wait. I was in the original model. I apologize. I screwed up. I screwed up. I screwed up. That's how you have to really um, keep mind your piece in here. So hold on. All right, I'm in the parts model again. Now, in this view, okay, in this view, I'm going to select the, the, the visibility graphics override. All right. I'm going to go to uh, floors. Okay. And you'll notice that Projection surface, lines, patterns, transparency. Damn it, I didn't get it to be as good as I wanted to. It's not what I wanted to say.